In this video, we're covering parallel and perpendicular lines. So the first one we're going to cover is parallel lines. Now these are lines that have the same gradient. So if two lines with gradients M1 and M2, because remember M represents gradient, are parallel, then we say that M1 is the same or equal to M2. And they look like that diagram there. They're equal distance apart the entire way, um, but the gradients are the same. The next thing we're going to look at is perpendicular lines. So these are lines with gradients whose product, so remember product is multiplication, is negative 1. So if two lines with gradients M1 and M2 are perpendicular, then M1 equals negative 1 over M2. Another way to represent these is M1 times M2 equals negative 1. All right, and when we have those, the two lines, so you can see the red line and the blue line, they cross at right angles. So they form 90 degrees when they cross at that point. Now, we're going to do some questions. So we need to state whether each pair of gradients represent parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So the first thing I like to check is always start with your parallel lines. So if we write parallel, we know that M1 should equal M2. Now, to test this, we say, does neg uh, 1 over 4 equal 4? No, that does not equal, so not parallel. That's the first one, because it's really easy to see if it's parallel or not. The next one we're going to do is our perpendicular lines. So perpendicular. Now, there's two ways we could do it. Um, for this one, I'm going to go M1 times M2 should equal negative 1. Alright, so in this case, 1 over 4 times 4 equals 1. So it does not equal uh, negative 1. So we can say that it's not perpendicular. Now since it failed both of the tests, we say that these lines are neither. Alright, so we'll jump down to the next one. We're going to do the same thing. We test for parallel first. And negative 1 over 3 does not equal 3. So we know that it's not parallel. Now we test for our perpendicular, and remember the product, so M1 times M2 should equal negative 1, so in our case negative 1 over 3 times 3 does equal negative 1, so we can say the lines are perpendicular. All right, next one, find the gradient of a line that is parallel to a line with gradient 4. Now remember, again, parallel lines are the same. So if we're saying that M1 equals 4, therefore M2 must also equal 4. All right, and that's all they do. For parallel, they're the exact same. Now here we need to find the gradient of a line that is perpendicular to a line with a gradient negative 6. So remember if we're doing with perpendicular, the other, uh, this is when you use the second formula, M1 equals negative 1 over M2. So we're going to say that M2 in this case is my negative 6. So over here, I substitute in my negative 6, the negatives cancel out, and I'm left with 1 over 6. So a, a line with a gradient of 1 over 6 is perpendicular to a line with gradient negative 6. To recap the video, remember parallel lines have the same gradient and the equal distance apart for the entire time, M1 equals M2. Then we have perpendicular lines, and these have a gradient whose product is negative 1. So when you multiply them, it equals negative 1, and they form right angles where they cross.